good evening and a very warm welcome once again to yet another Jenny Kirk show on Spotlight TV. Tonight then is a very special one-off show where I'm tributing our dear friend, our recently departed Sydney Divine. And uh, everybody knows, especially if you're from Scotland, that Sydney Divine was the master uh, or singer, entertainer from Scotland. And I have with me uh, on the show this evening my dear friend and colleague, Alistair MacDonald. Hi, Jean. There you are. Uh, so, I'm so honoured that you've managed to come along. Well, I'm grateful that you asked. Thank <laughs> oh, you. Definitely. Thank and you. Alistair, as you know, has appeared on, on my show when we filmed at the Caird Hall. What was that, about three, three years ago? I guess. I guess. Yes, when I was a child prodigy, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just a baby at the time. <laughs> but anyway, um, Alistair, I... Uh, Nearly, I think everyone in Scotland knows that you're a household name, and I'm quite sure when I when I was at the school, you were on was it Thingamajig? Yes, that indeed. Was first, and you were singing songs and battering out, battering out fantastic songs. The main one that that rings to mind is Sam the Skull. Oh, the Glasgow Cat, yes. The Glasgow <laughs> Cat, yeah. And we used to run around this, the, the the primary playground singing, I'm a cat, I'm a cat. <laughs> and, it was, and we used to do that, I kid yes. you not. And, you know, you've got your guitar here, so sure. so why don't would you fancy having a wee, a wee show? I would love it, yeah, yeah. In fact, I'm honoured to be part of Scottish tradition, to have uh, been given such terrific songs as that. Mm. Well, know? absolutely, absolutely. Here we go. I'm a cat, I'm a cat, I'm a Glasgow cat, and my name is Sam the Skull. I've got claws on my paws like a crocodile's jaws, and a heat like a farmer's ball. No, I'm not the kind of cat that sits on a mat, or the kind that you give a hug. But I'm the kind of cat that can strangle a rat, or even the yokies you know, Doug. No, I used to roam about in Shettleston, where they all knew me by sight. Here's a skull, here's a skull, you could hear the yell as they vanished out of the night. Near the pole, the stations do their way of bars in the windy sill. But I've known to keep the prisoners in the ticky boots and the skull. I'm a cat, I'm a cat, I'm a Glasgow cat, and my name is Sam the Skull. I've got claws on my paws like a crocodile's jaws, and a head like a farmer's bow. No one know the kind of cat that sits on a mat, or the kind of Jiggy a hug, but I'm the kind of cat that can strangle a rat or even the occasional dog. <laughs> oh, Alistair, that was fantastic. Uh, yes. The memories, my goodness, my goodness. But the thing is, though, that people think that I wrote that song, Janie, and I it did. didn't. I did. I thought. I know, isn't it? Well, that's the kind of thing that goes on in life, is that people get credited with all the wrong things. I mean, Sidney Devine would be the very first to tell you that he didn't write many of the songs. He perhaps adapted one or two that came his way, but he was dependent on folk not only having sung songs before him, but songwriters that could come up with the goods we all are as performers. We really owe these people a, a big, big debt, I think. But Harry Hagen wrote the song Sam the Skull. What was I going to say? Right, you've obviously got so many fantastic memories with Sid. You've sure. uh, you've got um, too many to mention, I think. We all have. <sighs> but in your memory, in your, what is your uh, biggest, one of your most biggest memories that sticks out when you talk about well, Sydney? Of all the memories that people might have of Sydney Divine, there is one that sticks out with me, apart from his generosity that I'll come to in a minute. It was just um, a couple of years, in fact, before Sydney was taken from us. A show in the pavilion, a big sort of gala performance, and Sid was in the corner. And he and I, we never talked songs or music. Sid and I, we always talked guitars and instruments and gigs was what we talked about. And they, well, man things, yes, you're quite right. And there he was sitting in the corner and I said, well, another Gibson guitar. <laughs> so I said, you, you forget them. And he said, yeah, and he was sitting there and he seemed very quiet and kind of reserved. And I said, are you feeling okay? And he said, I'm nervous. He hadn't actually sung in the pavilion, I think, for about a year. And I think he'd had maybe one or two issues throughout the year. And, and But he was nervous. Now, I liked... 
I like performers to tell me that they're nervous. That means they're not taking the audience for granted. He didn't take the audience for granted that he was going to walk on and wow them with whatever gems were going to come out his, his mouth. He wanted to go on there and sell the cookies mm -hmm. and really bring them along with him. I like that. I think that's, yeah. a, that's a good attitude to Absolutely. walk onto a stage with. But the thing I wanted to tell you about was his, his great generosity. Oh, yeah. If we look at this picture here, yeah. you see there a Gibson guitar. Now, a Gibson guitar, that's a kind of Rolls Royce of guitars. And that is a J200. And I said to him on one occasion, I said, Sid, that, is the big J200 still doing the business for you? And he said, oh, I don't like it. He said, I only get my picture taken with it. I bought it, he said, as a, a, as a broken guitar. He got it down in London. It was damaged. He got it repaired. Didn't like it very much. And he said, would you like it? And I said, well, Sid, I said, I couldn't really afford a, a Gibson guitar. He said, no, no, I'll give it to you. Yeah. He said, I'll give it to you. Now, I was just completely taken aback. People don't come up and offer you a Gibson guitar, you know. I was to phone him. But you know something, Jeannie? This is, my, this is the truth I tell you. I couldn't find the words to phone him up and say, hello, Alistair MacDonald, remember you said you would give me a Gibson gift? And Casey would say, oh, come on, I was kidding. You know, and I didn't have, so I eventually met up with him on another occasion. I said, how's the big guitar doing then? And he said, I gave it away to somebody else. Oh, he said, I offered, no, no, no. He said, I offered it to you. And he said, you didn't come back. And so I gave it to Duncan Finlay. And Duncan Finlay happens to be a far better guitar player than me. So I think, I like to think it's a win-win situation. It's a testimony to the, to the generosity of Sidney Devine and the dumbness of Alistair MacDonald. <laughs> but nonetheless, what we're talking about here is a showbiz phenomenon. You know, I mean, he had his detractors. People used to talk about his singing, and I wouldn't dare. Not the way I sing. I wouldn't dare talk about somebody else's singing. He always said he was like Marmite. You either love him or you hate him. Most and, people uh, love uh, them. Most people love them. Look at those theatres that were packed. That's millions and millions of sound. albums sold. Millions. Yeah. Yeah. Alistair, we have to move on. Sure. and uh, But we have to show one of your clips from when you filmed with us at the pavilion. Uh, sorry, at the pavilion. Oh! <laughs> yeah, at the, not the pavilion, at the Caird Hall in Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> pavilion, of course, was the Sydney Divine Shrine, yeah. uh, and he that was his favourite theatre of all, and we'll talk about that later on. But meantime, let's hear Alistair and see Alistair in, in action with The Night of Erdersley. In darkness under English Edward's heel There rose a lad to lead us and to make the tyrant reel He raised up his arm for freedom showing nerve and Scottish steel William Wallace, the knight o' oh, elders lee Sing now of Wallace, the knight o' oh, elders lee Guardian of Scotland, of truth and liberty With the loyal Andrew Murray, how he danced the English down. Very candid sterling, he provoked a royal frown. And mercenary traitors from Carlisle to London town knew of Wallace, the knight o' oh, Eldersley. Sing now of Wallace, the knight o' oh, Eldersley, guardian of Scotland, of truth and liberty. It's been an absolute pleasure having Alistair MacDonald here. Everyone, Alistair MacDonald. It's a privilege to be asked. Thank you. Thanks for uh, joining us, you. Thank you. And, and in the air, hug. Hug, hug, hug. Yes, yes, la, la, la. Indeed, indeed, indeed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyway then, folks, we have Clark Stewart online. Now, Clark and I go back an awful long way, maybe 35 years, and we have worked together on various clubs, uh, venues, theatres and, and hotels as such like. Um, and recently, 2018, Clark and I were the supporting artist for Sydney on his Scottish tour. Uh, Clark, can I just ask you then, um, how did you 
meet Sydney and how did you find him to work with? Hi Jenny, good to see you. I, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Sydney about 1999, just over 20 years ago. I was cruise director on a, a cruise ship sailing out of uh, Greenock in Scotland and the, um, the demographic of the passengers, it was 90% were Scottish and, and most of them came from the West Coast. So I, I thought I'd uh, get some Scottish celebrities on just to, to glamorise the cruise. So I invited Jimmy Logan on and of course Sydney and Shirley and uh, we just hit it off and had an absolute blast for the, for the two weeks on the cruise and we remained friends ever since. Uh, he came to my wedding a couple of years after that and uh, and then many, many years later I had the pleasure of uh, performing with him uh, and yourself on one of the tours we did the pavilion and a lot of the theatres around Scotland and he was just a, he, he was showbiz royalty. It was an honour, a privilege and a pleasure to, uh, to meet Sydney and share so many good stories and, and lovely times with Sydney. Never a bad word for anyone. I honestly love the guy and it'll be a sad, sad loss to Scottish show business. Thank you, Clark Stewart. That was uh, some lovely memories there. Moving on then, I think we should have a nice little clip of Sydney way back when he was in his heyday, roughly 1989-90, performed at the Pavilion Theatre. Sydney, take it away. Early shall Well, here I am sitting in the lovely company of Mr. Ray Cars from the Tartan Lads. You may remember now we had an interview, what, about three years ago, Ray? Yes, in the Cape Hall. Yeah, and we had That's the right. company then at that time with Bill, who is the yes. singing partner, and he, unfortunately, yes can't be here due to ill health. Ill health so right. that is so sad. So yes. we really hope we'll that... wish him all the best we'll anyway. Wish him all the best. Yes. And but he would have been here for you because it, he, he, would have. he likes you very much. Oh, he's so, yeah, yeah. a great guy. And, and you yeah. know... I'm so happy that we filmed the very last Tartan Lads together. Yes, that's together. right. She got the last Tartan Lads the together last. at the care tour for our show in the telly. So it's, and it's all about, it's what it's all about, Ray, is making memories. Oh, yes. And, yes. and we're here because yes. you have worked for an awful long time throughout your career with Sydney. So can you yes. tell us how it all started for you and Sid? And well, it started about 50 years ago, believe it or not. And it was due to a man, Henry Spurway, and um, Adam Buggy, that was the Buggy shots. Adam, after we went on Opportunity Knox as the Tartan Lads, Adam booked us and he run a, He was our manager for about four or five years. But his pal was uh, Henry Spurway. So Henry Spurway and uh, Adam Buggy were very good friends. Henry actually booked Sin the Divine as a management. He had also, at that time, he was booking, like, say, Billy Conley and the Bay City Rollers. But uh, with him being a pal of Adam Buggies, Adam said to him, can you get my boys some work in this? So what happened when Sydney went out, the Tartan lads went out. Now, it used to be, they start with, with us being on television and uh, Opportunity Knox, it was, uh, we were a Tartan lad show with Sydney Divine, but it didn't take long for Sydney to pop up. 
and it was the Sin the Divine show with the Tartan Lads and that's how it mainly went. Which meant anywhere you went, it was full houses. Because Sunday had a brilliant name. It was full houses. And he was a great guy to work for. But I remember we'd done the clubs to start with and uh, Fallin Miners were in there. Yes. And uh, what happened, Fallin Miners, we were on first because we'd done the first hour. Support He'd done the second, yes. So second, we came off after doing an hour and uh, suddenly had his shirt on the heater, heating it up for him. When he went to get it, it was soaking wet. The, the heater had leaked to water. Mm. So suddenly had to wring his shirt out in front of us put his shirt on and go on stage and do that the hour it was left. Really? It was absolutely, <laughs> and after it, we laughed and we this and that the next thing. But we'd done all the clubs. At that time, uh, Cumbernauld was coming up that, uh, and um, East Kilbride was just starting up, so all the big halls there, we were playing at Sin the Divine Show. Packed. So that helped the Tartan lads along, and there's no way I doubt about it. It helped the Tartan yeah, lads, lads get on the road. Well, we went from doing the, the clubs and the pubs into theatre. Now, we played the Airgate Theatre with Sydney, Sydney the Divine Show. Mm -hmm. In fact, one or two times you were, you were in the show as a support act, were you yes, not? I've been you were very young then, though. How old were you? I started singing for Sydney when I was 19, and I was also in the clubs. 19? And uh, yeah, I was 19, and this guy, Dave, uh, um, sorry, Jim Henderson at the time, deceased now, but he had a cassette belonging to me and he was trying to get me different bookings and that. Oh, yeah, and he yeah. sent in this cassette to uh, Sydney when he was working for Shindig. Oh, yes. But I just missed it with the skin of my teeth because oh. it was the last show that Sid was yes. recording yeah. there yes. for, uh, for the Shindig. And he asked me to go along. I met him. He gave me a five minute interview and then he gave me a whole list of dates to travel <laughs> with him. Right. And, uh, well, there you are. You know how many years that's oh, gone back. In your case, it's only about <laughs> 10. But my, my case is about 50. <laughs> Do you have any pictures of anything? Yes, I've got a wee picture here. This we've done the the, the, the theatre here, and this was one that we got taken in the pavilion in Glasgow. That's a great, that's a great pic. Can you see that? And that's uh, a yeah. Bill, of course, and myself with Sydney, right in the centre. Yeah. And uh, I, I was a treasure that one. Sydney was that type of boy. He was a a family man because he had his wife Shirley. Right. We used to yeah, Shirley get the kettle on. That's right. what was well, he had day? Shirley. He had Shirley and Morag and Bill had Maureen, and we've still got them to this day. So it won't be that continue. Yes, yeah. uh, in yeah. show business, you know what like it is to mm -hmm. keep a marriage. Yes. Well, we're fifty and sixty years now married, so mm -hmm. Bill's sixty years now, yeah. and. Uh, it, it was great to work with them. And he had a great sense of humour, didn't he? Oh, it? yes. My f early memories was we were on tour, we were away down lowest off Norwich and all the rest of it, and uh -huh. the registration on his car at that time had a, a Mercedes, uh -huh. and it was Sid 9. That's right, and I, I said, remember it. Do you remember it? I said, what does the 9 stand for? And you know what he said? What? Inches. <laughs> Yes. And of course, I just laughed and he laughed, you know, and and, uh, <laughs> and I, I, I then replied, oh, that'll be a, a big hat size then. <laughs> and we got along great oh, since yes. then, you know. Listen, Ray, we're going to show some clips of the oh, Tartan Lads and some music, so great. see you in a wee bit. Born to the sea and tumble 
angels are its rocky bed like spirits wild and free the mellow maybes tunes his lay the blackbird swells his note and little robin sweetly sing above the rocky grove oh meet me then a dewing beside yon mossy Upon the key, I saw the diamond teardrop was shining in her eye, and as my ship sailed in the quiet of all the old and bland, saw a wee spray go heather tightly clutched within her hand. A wee spray go heather wild up, I would miss. A wee spray go heather that the mountain dew had kissed. If there's a dream of Scotland that you want to keep, put a wee spray go heather. Welcome back. Ray, I absolutely loved that footage there when you and Bill were really young. Was it 40, 30 years uh, ago? I, I, something like that. 40 odd years, maybe 45, maybe. And you've got so many videos and, and, and cassettes and, and tapes and they're all over the world. Yes. And you've yes. managed to hold on to about five of them. Aye, that's right, that's right. That's, <laughs> that's all. all you've got left. That's all. <laughs> there's no doubt about it to, to, for our record sales and that was Sydney again, you know, Sydney. Sydney. And Sydney shows we used to sell them like mad. Uh, well, I, I too have got a lot to thank Aye. Sydney for. Yes. If it wasn't for him, he showed me how to milk, milk a crowd and work Aye. a stage and watch me. And yes, I'll, never, I'll never forget. We'll never Aye. forget no, no, what Sydney. Great what guy. Sid did for us. And, and thanks very much for coming to my home here in, in Armadale and because uh, we've worked the theatre together, yeah. we've worked a, a castle together. Yes. Remember we've done the, we did. the walk around the, was that Scotland yet yeah, or Scotland for me? Falkland. Aye, Falkland, yes, yes, we've done that. Falkland. Then we're at the bridges together. Yes. We'll, well, now you're at my home together. Yes. Don't tell the wife. <laughs> She's getting the kettle on. <laughs> oh, I hope she's getting the kettle on. But anyway, I hope that really, Ray, when all this COVID problem is all away, we can get back started in doing what we do best. Yes, I And hope so. to work together again yes, and to I hire a theatre, yes. watch this space because we're hoping to work together kind of soon. Very so, soon. Um, Ray, thank you very much. Thank you very so, much um, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> who very kindly sent us in some clips of memories and time spent with Sydney. Now, Jim presented the Cayley and Breakfast shows on West Sound Radio, and for an awful long time, he and Sid built up a fantastic friendship. Let's hear what Jim has to say. How I became friends with Sid, oh, it was many, many years ago, through the show business ball. And we became friends, basically drinking buddies, actually, show business ball. Then I became his hairdresser. 
uh, him and Shirley's hairdresser, and we shared so, so, so many memories. Sid had moved to West End from Radio Clyde because it was handier for him to get to work. He could drive around the corner. Sid had a huge influence on West End Radio. It was a small radio station compared to Radio Clyde. And we were a small family in West End, and Sid just joined the team. He had fans all over the world who would send him letters and everything. But the majority of things that he gets sent every Saturday morning was ladies' underwear. Yes, the panties, the big panties, the small panties, were all sent to West Sound to our very own Sid. When he phoned me from the ICU unit on Saturday before he passed away, when he said, I love you, son, I said, don't talk like that, Sid. Keep fighting, he meant it's a long hell struggle, Jim. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I realised then that was the last time I would chat to Sid, share a joke, see him on stage. Sid, you rest in peace, you deserve it. You have left a legacy that everybody for years to come can enjoy. Thank you so much, Jim, for sharing those memories. They were uh, wonderful times indeed. You also sent in a tiny clip of when you were actually cutting Sydney's hair. And on this clip, Sydney's mentioning the time when he, he was receiving his MBE from the Queen. Let's see if we can tune into this wee clip here. Ah, Jim, that was just great. What a nice wee clip there off Sydney. And as always, it was always down to earth. <laughs> anyway, I think we should hear some more off Sydney. Dishes. Meet me by the fishing hole and wear your leather breeches. Tell your mom and pa everything's all right. We're gonna go fishing next Saturday night. Well, let's take makeup, leave behind. Makeup takes up too much time. You're a little honey and you're quite a dish. But Saturday night, we're going fishing to fish. Don't forget the frying pan to bring along some minnows. Gonna get your catfish and we'll cook it up for dinners. Roll it up and fry it up and bake it up right. We're gonna go fishing next Saturday night. Well, let's say makeup leave behind. Makeup takes up too much time. You're a little honey and you're quite a dish. But Saturday night we're going fishing to fish. Never mind your partner, but we're not a going dancing. Cause your daddy's had enough of dancing for romancing. Bring along your brother, that will be all right. We're really going fishing next Saturday night. But let's take makeup, leave behind. Makeup takes up too much time. You're a little honey and you're quite a dish. But Saturday night, we're going fishing to fish. I've been very, very lucky that the, the people who have followed me, in fact, that in the pavilion in Glasgow, which I do every November, there's uh, four generations have come in to see the show. 
like the, the granny and, and daughter and their daughter, and it was just, just quite, but uh, that's the good thing about th th this kind of uh, music that I do, that they're uh, country music based, uh, that uh, the fans, once, once the fans start with you, they never leave you. So I've got, I've got have, have fans, I've lost many fans along the way, uh, just through illness, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but basically the, the, the fans that I've had, they've been with me right from the, from the word go. As, as, and it's just, it's just like the band that I have as well. I mean, there's, there's guys in my band have been playing, one, one of the oldest members has uh, been with me for 46 years. And of course, since we have the camera crew here tonight, Sid, we are going to f be filming bits and pieces of the show tonight. Oh! Is that good? Yes, but will you wait till I get into my glad rags? I'll try. Okay. <laughs> but I think I'll have to go and get ready as well, because time is against us. But of you course. stay tuned now, and uh, from all the way from Falkirk, the town hall, let's see Sydney in action.
Valentine partner to dance me through on a summer night and hold me close like a little bitty baby child make me feel like the world is rolling by your eyes fortunately
Anyway, everyone, sadly, we have come to the end of yet another show on this Sydney Divine Tribute. I want to thank all my special guests who have appeared and hopefully we'll all get back to working again and have our memories forevermore with Sydney. So, Sid, here's to you because you are indefinitely a favourite memory of mine. Cheers, Sid.